any extra things in that we don't have to have. Oh my gosh, I'd love to get it in, I'm sure. There it is. <laughs> okay. Ready? To yep. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Ben Schrock. Come on into our new office here at BA Schrock Financial Group. Our address is now 131 College Street. I'm going to give you a little tour of our new space. So we um, got in here pre-COVID. We, we uh, signed a deal for the building and then decided to do a full renovation during all COVID. So it wouldn't, didn't really wasn't timing wasn't really great for us, but um, it worked out. So we actually hired um, Jeff and Dina uh, with Pure Haven Designs that did MC Real Estate's building right down the road from us, and they did an absolutely wonderful job with our building. Um, as you can see, we built out some individual offices for privacy. So I'll walk you through here. As you look over here to the to the right, um, we have Caitlin, my wife's office, who's our director of operations. Um, and then over there to the left here, we have my office, which is a little bit messier than hers. So she's a lot night cleaner and neater than I am. Um, and then as we make our way back here, we have some, just some soft seating for, for clients as they come into the office to wait for their appointments. And you can keep coming this way. And we don't, aren't quite done over here. We're gonna build out a little advisor workstation. So as we add staff and, and employees to our firm, they're gonna have a little space to work here um, in, in that little section over there. And if we keep following me this way, we have Colleen LeMasters, one of our financial advisors office over there. And then I know this is Janie's absolute favorite space in our, our location, not because of the people sitting there, but because of the umbrellas um, above them. Uh, but we have Dan and Caitlin there working. And uh, the, the wonderful umbrella lights that they designed is pretty neat uh, design. But we, we occasionally meet there as teams, just a little workstation um, that, that we've designed over here. And as you keep coming back this way, uh, you can ignore the balloon wall. This is not something that is normally here. We had our, our one-year-old's birthday party last week. And then over here, we put in a, a kitchen, um, like kind of a full kitchen. And then on either side of the kitchen, we have a men's restroom and a women's restroom. And then I think this is probably the most creative idea that Dina came up with was we have a closet behind there um, and it's kind of a wasted space behind there. We didn't need the full space. So she kind of built into the wall here um, and put a little, our little coffee bar. So then we can grab coffee for clients and, and ourselves and Janie, of course, when she comes in. And then lastly, we have Keith Lockwood's office, our uh, chief investment officer back here. So, and then, oh, one more, we got Linda's office. So I don't know, Drew, if you can make it back here. Um, this is our last space as I fall down the steps. Um, uh, Linda's office back here. So that is pretty much the grand tour of everything. And if we make our way back up front, we'll kind of show you the, the two last rooms that we didn't hit in the very front of the office. The, the one up here on the left is our podcast room. So I record a, a podcast every week um, and we have a designated space for that because it's something that we truly enjoy doing. Um, so that's up here on the left hand side as well as some awards and recognition that, that we've received in, in our industry. And then lastly, where we do the majority of our client meetings and where we'll sit today and have our conversation is our, our main conference room. So with you, these beautiful um, French doors that they built for us. So that is the grand tour. Um, it's a, a long time coming. We've been in business for eight years and rented spaces. So it's finally nice to have a place that we can call home um, and really enjoy coming to work every day here. So thank you. So I'm Janie Parrish from the Wadsworth Chamber of Commerce, and I'm very lucky this morning. On It's an extremely rainy day today, and I'm very lucky to be here with my friend Ben Schrock. Yes. So, Ben, we've been together a long time. Yeah, it has. Yeah. It's, oh, I, don't, I don't lose track of the years now, but uh, I'd say six, seven years at least. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, Ben uh, came to, well, he didn't come to Wadsworth. He opened his business in Wadsworth because mm -hmm. you're a Wadsworth guy. Yep, born and raised. Yeah, your whole family. And you've yep. got about, what, 15 kids in your, <laughs> in your family? Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, whenever we get together for the holidays, it seems like there's about 30 people there. So, yeah, we got there's five of us total, siblings. And then my older brother has three boys, and Caitlin and I have uh, two boys. So my parents have a house full of grandsons, and they're loving it. Oh, boy. So normally I would be right up uh, having, having my arm around Ben, but uh, <laughs> we're trying to do the social distancing thing to be very conscientious. Yeah. So that's why I'm not, like, right next to Ben. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. So um, any, uh, first of all, I do want to ask, how yeah. many kids are in your family? There are five total. So I'm the second of five. DJ's the oldest, and myself, and my sister, 
Cassie, who's a teacher at, at Maslin. My brother DJ teaches here at Wadsworth and coaches at uh, boys basketball at Chippewa High School. And then my younger brother, Anthony, is a member of the chamber as well. Yes. Um, owns his own little fitness center in Wadsworth. And then Leah's the baby of the family, so five total. And God only knows I love that girl. Yeah, she's full of energy. and, yeah. and being the youngest of five, he teaches a tough love, and, and she's probably the <laughs> toughest of all five of us. So, yeah. Your dad calls her a spark plug. She is. That's, that's yeah. a good description. Yeah. So, after you graduated from Wadsworth mm-hmm. High School, yep. what happened then? Yeah, so I, I graduated from Wadsworth in 2004 and went to the College of Worcester, um, played bas- or played football down there, excuse me, um, and uh, went there for a, a psychology degree and actually met my wife, Caitlin, there. We started dating back in 2006 so we've been together for 14 years which is crazy now that I think of it sure um, I grabbed her when she was a freshman so she didn't know any better at that time <laughs> <laughs> so I tricked her in um, and then I uh, graduated from college and, and got right into the industry worked for a captive life insurance agency and worked for there for two years and worked for um, an independent firm for a few more years and then started off on my own here downtown in the basement of Bob's building um, right there the old first mayor building so sure yeah started yeah. VA Shock Financial Group in 2012 Okay, so you went from a psychology degree, yeah. and what were you going to do with that? I had no clue. <laughs> I, I, I just, uh, I liked it. It was interesting to me, um, and believe it or not, it, and, and it's it's come into play into my benefit meeting with clients when we're talking about you know finances and the markets and how volatile things are and politics, all that stuff. I've really been able to use that, believe it or not. Um, never imagined it going that that direction, but you know when I graduated, it was 2008. The markets, the, the stock market was in the, in the gutter and um, the job market was even worse. So I just kind of took the first job that I had offered to me and, and just wanted to get out in the working world and hit the ground running. So yeah. um, that's how I kind of just started and kind of fell into place from there. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so when you were at the bank building at yeah. 102 Main Street, yep. that's now MC Real Estate, okay, then you moved up to the second floor. Correct. Yeah, we spent about two years in the basement um, and then about four, or no, longer than that, probably Two and a half, and then maybe another five or six years upstairs um, in the second floor, and that's where I started adding on staff at that point. Okay, and how many staff do you have? Total, we got six of us now. So nice, yeah. mm-hmm. very cool. Now, um, what made you decide to leave the bank building and come down here? Because this was a huge, huge leap. It was. It really was. It was something that we always had wanted to do. You know, in the back of my mind, I've always thought it'd be nice to own my own um, piece of, of real estate or my own office building and have it, whether it be a standalone building. So we've always been looking. I've been looking for years just for the good opportunities. Um, and then when, uh, during all the COVID stuff started happening, we started really kind of looking at that time. And um, this one was open and we're like, well, let's start exploring that as an option. And I love being downtown. I mean, I, that was my hardest thing is like, I want to move, but I love being downtown. Our clients love being downtown. So when we found that this building was, was open uh, or, you know, for release and sale potentially, um, we started exploring that. So then it, it came into fruition for us. Oh, boy, because it yeah. is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. So um, let me ask you a couple mm-hmm. things here, you know. Tell me about your staff, like um, their positions that they have. Sure, sure. So, um, Caitlin, I'll just kind of go down the hall as we go in, in our office. As and you always saw start with your wife, you Mr. I know, I know better. Okay. Um, so, Caitlin is our director of operations. So, she's been with me. She worked for Westfield for about six years. So, she's been with us for a little over two years. She controls everything here in the office and at home. So, both places. Yeah. And you. And me, exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. And then um, Colleen was the next uh, uh, individual. She's an investment advisor rep, so a financial advisor for us. Um, she actually just recently obtained her charter financial consultant um, degree or accreditation, which is something we're very proud of for her. So she's now a, a CHFC in, in our industry, which is a very um, high accreditation. So we're nice. proud of her for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Dan Oakleaf is our newest addition. Um, he came to us in June. So he didn't even see, well, he met with us in the old office. He didn't get to see our old digs, but um, he, he got spoiled here right off the bat. And, sure. Um, so he's another financial advisor. Then Keith Lockwood is our chief investment officer in Port portfolio manager here and then lastly is Linda Sintik is our office office administrator so there's six of us total including myself right yeah. and you know what um, I love when I call you mm-hmm. and talk to Linda yeah she's awesome what a great like not only face of your mm-hmm. your business but on the phone and I mean amazing oh yeah she, and she's been with me for 
I want to say five or six years. I don't know exactly how long, but it seems like it's just yesterday when, when we had mm-hmm. her. And, and boy, are we lucky to have her because she is awesome. I'm with you because I so enjoy it. Sometimes I'll just call. Yeah, <laughs> just to talk to her. <laughs> so you had a huge grand opening yeah. down here. And everybody was like, oh, my gosh, this building is amazing. Yes. Yeah, because I remember when it was empty, Mm -hmm. and it was a nightmare, you know, at the time. And, you know, um, especially when buildings are older, you know, if you're not keeping up and doing things, it's easy, you know, they go to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. And then when the music store came in, they did great things. They did. And now you've done great Mm -hmm. things. And you know what? That's what downtowns need. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that was kind of our vision. And it was so cool to work with Jeff and Dina and Caitlin. You know, I kind of just stood in the background. And when it comes to design, I can't visualize anything. So I just, you know, trust them. And it was so great to work with them because they had this vision of keeping it um, kind of older look, the older feel, but still but give it a facelift too. So, you know, mm-hmm. the characteristics that they did, the attention to detail that they did throughout the office is, is really impressive to still give it that old feel, but just freshen it up a little bit. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what they did. You just uh, were in charge of the check. That's it, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you did a good job with yeah, that. I want you to know that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so what is your very favorite thing about financial advising? I would say that the transformation that we can see from bringing on a a prospective client to, you know, maybe three, four years down the road and and feeling like that person that we've helped through their their finances and their planning for retirement um, and how they they transitioned from someone that was just a, you know, a stranger off the street, essentially, to Mm -hmm. part of our family. You know, that's the coolest thing is to watch that happen because we do client events we do fun stuff in our grand opening we had a great client turnout for that yeah. um, they're so supportive of us and very happy of us and a mm-hmm. lot of our clients have been with us through those old offices and, and they're very proud of what we've done and, and proud to see us now in our, our new home so watching them transition from that and, and kind of seeing how we can change people's lives and help people really plan for their finances is, is by far the best thing in this business. Um, now, where do you see things changing in your industry? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I mean, a while ago, there was the, the robo-advisor, so like all the algorithm-based um, things where you're not going to need a, a person or human to interact with. Everything would be done technology-wise and, and um, handled through through computers. Um, that was the big wave for a while, and they said that we're going to be replaced by you know technology, essentially. Um, and, and I still see a wave of that coming. But I, I don't believe that's going to put us out of out of the industry. I still think that when it comes to dealing with people's money, mm-hmm. they want to sit across the table and you know look you in the eyes and, and talk mm-hmm. to you about their stuff. They want to see that you're here, you know, not um, some fly by night company or someone that mm-hmm. they're talking to on the computer, or, you know, a robo advisor essentially. So um, I see the shift though is coming more and more that direction that there's going to be more influence of it. So we embrace it, you know, we embrace technology, we mm-hmm. in- include it within our practice. Um, but obviously, we don't want it to replace us because you know we want to feel like we're necessary in that, sure. in that regard. So. Yeah, I know when uh, during the shutdown, you know, you had to determine if you were essential. Mm-hmm. Well, I personally felt I was essential, <laughs> <laughs> but the government did not. Yes. Yeah. So you know, um, I'm thinking about this as you're talking that it's a um, almost like a, a travel agency. Mm-hmm. You know that. Um, once you use a travel agent yeah. and develop that relationship, you know, and you realize that they can help you in so many different right. ways than just going online and trying to find the best deal. You're right. Yeah. And we did that once and never again. Uh, we did the same thing. And yeah. we booked one trip with travel agent and we're like, never again. Because we right. booked nightmares through the, the price lines or whatever the, the online stuff is. But if something goes wrong, it's nice to pick up the phone and call someone. And say, I need yep. help. I need you to do this. And they're kind of mm-hmm. your home base here. It can help you with yep. whatever. So, and But it's really relationships that will get you every single time. Yep. Now, I know that you do a... Um, like when you're talking about client events, mm-hmm. that you do kind of like a thank you mm-hmm. um, party a couple times a year, once a yep. year. 
And um, how did you come up with that idea? Because it's got to be expensive. Yeah, it is. It's, it's something to where um, when I first started, believe it or not, the very I've always through through all the conferences I've gone to, I've always just tried to soak up information from people. And the, the biggest thing that they were explaining to me during these conferences is, you know, love your clients, you know, share that because without your clients, you don't have a business. And, and right. I've always taken that to heart. So. The very first Christmas party I did or Christmas event, I actually I think I had like five clients at the time. So I actually got um, little like candy boxes, gift boxes, and you know Caitlin wrapped them and I hand delivered them. So and then the nice. next year we did something I think very similar, mailed them out, and then we actually had our first Christmas party where we had maybe. I don't know, 40 or 50 people. And then every year it's just been growing exponentially and the room gets bigger and bigger. Um, so it's something to where um, we want to give back to our clients and just show our love to them and our appreciation to them because, like I said, without them, none of this is possible. We don't have a business. Sure. Um, so we're very appreciative of that. And it wasn't just enough for us to do a Christmas event. So we started doing wine tastings or, you know, Oktoberfests or whatever, or what we call our Schrocktoberfest. Um, so do. doing those yeah. events too. Or they're just fun for us. You know, we love them. We look forward to them throughout the course of the year. And, you know, Caitlin's an event planner by, by trade. That's what she went uh, worked at Westfield for doing events. So she does a fantastic job of, of designing and, and organizing that stuff for us. So, yeah. Yeah, because I know every seminar that I have been to, you mm-hmm. know, for the chamber, it always talks that it's easier to maintain your your business, Correct. yeah, your clients rather than to get new. Yep. Of course, you always want new. Mm-hmm. But when somebody believes in you that they, you know, come to you and they say, I, I need help with my finances, yep. yeah, it's, and if you can do a great job for them, which I know you do, mm-hmm. yeah, it's easier to keep them. It is, and that's kind of always my goal when I tell every prospective client before they do business with us, it's our goal to be you know, their advisor, their firm for the rest of their lives. That's what we do when we take on a client. We take it that serious that we intend to be their advisor for the next 30, 40, 50 years of their life. Um, and not something that we expect them to leave us after a year or two years or six months, heaven forbid. So um, mm-hmm. so we, we put a lot of time and energy and focus into that to make sure that not only are they getting the service they need, the, the planning that they need, but also the, the appreciation too. I think that's the, the extra bit that get, puts us over the edge with, mm-hmm. with a lot of uh, people. Well, money is extremely important. It is. Extremely. And mm-hmm. so planning is just so essential. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of people tend to think that if you don't have, like, a big savings account, that you really don't need a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. And I know that's not true. Yeah. And, we're, and we work with people of all sizes. You know, it doesn't matter if you're just starting out. Sometimes those are the fun ones because... There's some unique strategies we can do if you have college student loan debt. You know, everyone's graduating nowadays mm-hmm. with a ton of student loan debt. Colleen does a fantastic job of working with our younger clients and developing student loan strategies. So um, there's a lot of things that we can do that are outside the box to help you prepare for that end goal of retirement. Because basically, that's the bulk of our business is planning for retirement. But if we can get you on early to say this is what we need to do and then keep on track throughout the course of your life, mm-hmm. you're going to be set up for a really, really nice retirement. So any age, really. Yeah, because I know I always thought that, you mm-hmm. know, I don't have any money, yeah. so <laughs> why would I need a financial advisor? Yeah. But you know what, it's that long term, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not like you're always going to make this amount of money. It's going to add and add, hopefully add up. Yeah, that's right. If we're yeah. doing our job, it's growing too, right? So right. it is, it, and it's something that, that you know, uh, there's a lot of firms out there, not to pick on any of the other firms and, and their philosophies, but some sure. people want a certain dollar amount before they do business. But, you know, and, and a lot of people I've heard speak publicly about that, say that we, you should transition your business that way. And I, it goes back to where why I started the business in the first place, and that was to help people, and especially in the community that I grew up in. So, mm-hmm. um, if if I can't do that for someone that has you know zero dollars versus ten million dollars, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing what I started this business for. I started to help everyone and help as many people as we can. So we truly stick true to our guns in that situation and, and help anyone that one, wants to walk through our door or needs help for us. You know, um, we do our Easter basket mm-hmm. scholarship auction every year, and um, I always write a little note with their check mm-hmm. that um, please get your education, yeah. whatever it is, you know, if it's a trade school, if it's a college, whatever it is, and um, come back to Wadsworth. And, you know, because we're behind you and yeah. we want you to come back. So you're a perfect example yeah. of that. Well, thank you. Yeah. And, and it's a great community. And that's why, again, why I like to be here in the center of, of town and why we're so thrilled to be in this location. Because 
you do such great work in the community. We want to be a part of that, involved in that, oh, um, because it's really cool to watch what's going on down here and, and to be on the front end or the cutting edge of what's transforming here downtown and what's to come in, in the future years is going to be really exciting. So we're looking forward to it. I think so too. Now I remember uh, when I first came down to see you here. Mm-hmm. You know, and I want everybody to know this young man joined the chamber right away. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I came down to see you after you had moved in, and you told me that you're going to remodel the front of the building, mm-hmm. yeah. So you, you can't do everything all at once, right? Right. We still yeah. are in, in the works of that. If it would ever quit raining, um, <laughs> I'm sure we, we would. Um, but we are we are planning to get that done this year. So um, and we've had some really cool renderings done, and I'm excited to see the final touch because again, Jeff and Dina are doing it, and it seems like anything nice. they touch is is perfect. So we're we're excited for that. Oh, boy. I could hardly I wait, <laughs> and I hope you have another ribbon cutting for that. Yeah, we could if it's up to you guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so tell me about um, your family. Yep. You know about Caitlin. Yep. So we got two boys, Henry, who's uh, uh, will be three here next Friday. So oh my god, I know, I know, and he loves Janie, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, I love Henry. <laughs> every time we go to Mexican on Fridays, that's the first thing he asks is, "Where's Janie?" <laughs> so he's on the lookout for you. <laughs> Um, I so. might hang out there <laughs> once in a while. I don't know. The kid just doesn't forget anything. Yeah. And then um, Henry will be three, and then Monroe just turned one last week. So we have Henry and Monroe. Um, they're they're a lot of fun uh, watching them grow up and getting to spend time with them, and really watching Caitlin spend time with them because Caitlin's here three days a week and home two days a week. So oh, nice. part of that transition away from her corporate job here was also to, to spend time with the kids and. We try not to lose sight of that, um, and that's really cool to, to experience, you know, at least have her experience a lot of those those life-changing events and watching them walk and do all the fun stuff for the first time. Oh, so sure. That's awesome. And yeah. she gets it on, on camera, so she'll send it to me if I'm busy or something. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. 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 So um, I've met your mom, Shannon, yeah. numerous, numerous, numerous times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And is she still with the schools? She is, yeah. So um, it, although her retirement date keeps fluctuating, she doesn't know when it's going to be set. Um, so, but she knows where to come, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> and now, again, working with families, oftentimes it's nice, but it's difficult because they're they tend to be my uh, least attentive clients. So they just figure we'll take care of everything for them. Um, so I met with her and my dad the uh, probably two or three weeks ago just to review some stuff and. Man, I was I was kind of glad when it was over because <laughs> I don't know if they saw me as you know been their son or a financial advisor or which way they they saw it, but um, it was fun to to kind of let them experience what we do on a daily basis and oh. really appreciate that. So it was nice, mm-hmm. and, and again, they were very thankful for that too. So, um, but yeah, she's you know hanging on for a little while at least. I don't know when that she's final awesome. date is. Yeah. yeah, too. She's a good girl. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I met your dad. He was a speaker at our Lions yeah. Club, and he's. Is that coach? He is. He's yeah. uh, coaches girls basketball. He's gone through many different stints of that, where he started out, you know, coaching, and then um, retired. Went to Mass and Jackson for a few years, and retired again. And he's back at Chippewa. And I think he's. I know he's over 600 wins. Um, I think he's nearing 700. He's one of the, um, you know, winningest coaches of all time in the state of Ohio, which is really awesome, and we're proud of him for that. And he was recently um, honored to uh, be the recipient. Uh, one of the, the nominees for the coach of the year in the country for Ohio, for high school basketball. So oh he's representing the state of Ohio for that. So uh, hopefully he gets that. I don't know who gets the vote on it or whatnot, but it's quite the honor for him to, to see that. And it keeps him young and, and, you know, full of energy, that's for sure. Yeah, but you know what? Also, um, growing up with the coach, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There had to be some great things and some not great things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, and that's the nice thing about being in finance, and it's not something he's familiar with. So he, he can't coach me on that. So um, my brother, who's the coach, on the other hand, they can go back and forth and banter. I'm glad I'm, I just step back and let him talk, and, and he can coach him up all he wants. But in our world, he doesn't really know, not too familiar with it, so he kind of stays back. <laughs> nice. I, I worked my way out of that, that coaching world, uh, which is nice. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so tell me, if somebody um, says, geez, I think I'm ready for a financial advisor, yeah. what should they do, Ben? They can call us, email us, go to our website. It's a great place to get our information. You can fill out a little uh, form on there actually submit that and then get contacted by either Caitlin someone on my staff will contact you find out what you're kind of looking for a lot 
align you with the right advisor. And then we really sit down in the first first meeting, we really just have a conversation to see, you know, one, can we help you? And two, do you really want our help? And then we kind of transition that into that second appointment where we really gather and organize that plan um, and, and, and show them what we're going to do um, on that plan. And then maybe make a decision if they want to hire us or not, and then we move forward, um, or we don't move forward, and then we do, we continue to, to monitor that plan, keep on track, and just schedule regular nice. meetings. So call us, you know, come on in to the office, walk on by, stop on in. You know, we got a door here, someone's always here. Um, you just stop on in if you want. And you have great coffee here. You do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had, and all kinds of cream, all <laughs> kinds of cream, yeah. Well, Ben, you are just a delight, thank and you. just a delight to be in the community. Thank you. And thank you for hiring uh, all these people, especially your wife. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it a good deal. I didn't have a choice there, so. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, Ben, thank you for everything. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you. Okay, and stop and see Ventra right downtown Wadsworth.